First thing I have to do is make some apologies. One, I'm hot and sweaty. I saw myself on uh, YouTube recently and thought I shouldn't be that shape. Spheres are good, but not good for a human being. Also, I have to apologise for the fact I'm probably going to come across as rambling on this one, but it's YouTube. I can ramble. It's in the rules. Also, I have some thanks to hand out, specifically to Phil Hollands, who responded to my response very rapidly and gave me some good advice and high praise. It's always good to know that the good and the great think you're not good, well, not necessarily good and great, but good. And 43 Alley, who subscribed to me, who has been one of the most insp inspirational animators, at least atheist animators, I've ever come across. And also everybody who responded to my video. Thank you very much. Thank you for the ratings. And I almost said thank you very much for the entry iron. I'm not going to go down that route. I'm going to continue with the theme of disrespect. I'm actually going to bring out a specific example of if you like the dichotomy of religious thought that is involved when it comes to respect. Recently in the UK the government tried to introduce a piece of legislation which ultimately was just a piece of employment legislation. That caused quite a furore amongst the religious. I know several people who are religious who are trying to make it into a political agenda. Maybe. And that's the Equality Bill. Now the Equality Bill, if you like, is the cherry on the cake of equality. For a long time in this country we've had legislation regarding equality of race, equality of sex, disability legislation. What we needed though was something really to state that we are serious about it. Progressive government has always got to be on the move. We can't afford to sit back and rest on our laurels. And while I'm not a fan of our particular government, I think that their attempt to introduce this was laudable. However, almost as soon as it became public that we were in fact intending on uh, introducing this legislation, no less a luminary than the Pope got involved. Now, for me, religion and politics don't go together. They're incredibly dangerous bedfellows, like religion, sorry, like politics and the military. You can't have a democracy where you have religion calling the shots. That is called a theocracy. Now bearing in mind that we still have bishops in the House of Lords, which I think is a ridiculous anachronism in the 21st century, it was quite strange that those Protestant bishops then allied themselves with the Pope. But if you look deeper, into the process of religion, then it actually becomes a rather clear why. Now the Pope effectively claimed that we would be putting unjust impositions on religion. Well, here's the thing. Religion is about discrimination. It's about unjust impositions. This is the person who is in charge of the largest Christian religion on this planet and he will not allow Africans to use condoms which will save lives because it would then indicate that the infallibility of various popes throughout the past 50-60 years hasn't been quite as watertight as they'd like you to believe. Condoms save lives. But in order to maintain their religious paradigm, they're willing to sacrifice those lives. This is the Pope who will not allow contraception on a planet with seven billion people on it and a rapidly rising population with resources rapidly reaching overload we are not going to be able to live on this planet for much longer if we keep reproducing at the rate that we have been doing. So, for him to come along 
and say that we would be putting unjust impositions on his particular Sky Daddy's rule book, I think is a little disingenuous. And then it continues. He accuses us of attempting to negate natural law. These are the people, and again, him at the top of the uh, food chain, who say that their book of fairy tales is the inspired word of a god who magicked everything into existence. No natural law involved. Just let there be light. Bang! There was light. The same God who managed to impregnate a virgin, who sacrificed his own son, who routinely, that son anyway, performed miracles. Why does the natural world come into this? Where's the evidence? Where are the peer-reviewed papers on it? But we're expected now to believe that as a justification for stopping a piece of legislation going through Parliament. It doesn't compute for me. But if you dig a little deeper, that's where, to quote the religious, the revelations come. There is a similar paradigm where revolution is concerned. It is simply the fact that these people do not wish to be the same as other people. They don't want the realisation of the basic reality of the fact that the old guy over there, standing around in a cape and a funny hat, is exactly the same as the six foot six transvestite over there called Loretta. Apart from the fact that Loretta probably never belonged to the Hitler Youth. This legislation would take away their right to discriminate against other people. That is what they're worried about. Suddenly, they're not the chosen people anymore. They're just the same as the rest of us. Why do they find that scary? If God was on their side, they wouldn't be running around in circles to stop us making everybody equal, would they? Anyway, rant over and done with. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.